The reading comprehension on the SAT, like we were discussing earlier, depends a lot on what kind of passage that we are getting and also depends on how we are reading the passage and also how we analyze the uh, answer options that are given. But it would become easier if we look at the reading comprehension passages in terms of the type of reading required for um, a certain type of question. Like there are different types of questions on the SAT for reading comprehension. Uh, let's say, for example, let's take the primary purpose question. What is the objective of a primary purpose question? Whenever the reading comprehension tests you on the primary purpose, the objective is to see whether you have understood what the main purpose of the passage is all about. In order to understand what the main purpose of the passage is, Obviously, it goes without saying you have to sit there reading the passage and then understand and then go for the primary purpose. This would be an ideal situation. But unfortunately, uh, when we are looking at competitive exams and we are looking at lengthy passages, this may not always be possible. So, when we read a particular passage, we do the reading according to the kind of question that is given. For example, let us uh, take a look at one sample question to see how a primary purpose question would look like and how we go about analyzing the answer options. More than concentrating on what the passage is all about, what are the finer points mentioned, what are the examples given, what are the counter examples given. Instead of focusing on all that, since the question deals with the primary purpose, let's look at how to tackle this primary purpose or main idea of the passage without actually knowing anything about the passage. Now here, I have listed out a question and like I said just now, there is no passage here. But let us see what answers are possible and for what reason these answers are possible. Now on the SAT, a primary purpose question may look something like this. Which of the following best expresses the purpose of the passage as a whole? So when they say purpose of the passage... That means it is talking about the main idea of the passage or the primary purpose of the passage. Now when we are looking at the question also pay attention to words like best expresses. Not simply which of the following reflects the primary purpose of the passage. That is also a type of question. But when you have a question framed like this, best expresses, what is the indication that we get? The indication that we get is that there may be more than one answer which is dealing with the primary purpose. But one of the answer options only would be accurate to describe the contents of the passage. Now, we don't have a passage here. Let's look at the answer options. This will also give you an idea as to how the answer options are framed and how we are supposed to analyze these answer options in terms of the critical reading uh, of the SAT. Look at the first answer option. It says to describe a relationship between literature and history. Now the length of the uh, reading comprehension passage as we know maximum is 80 lines or 90 lines. Now in 80 or 90 lines how many words will we have? Maybe 500 words or 600 words. Now in 500 words, is it possible to describe a relationship between two major areas like literature and history? Is it really possible to establish a connect between literature and history? Perhaps not. In 500 words, maybe that is not possible. Take a look at the next one. To be little modern critics. Be little? What is the meaning of be little? Maybe something is looked at as very little. So something that is of no consequence, something uh, that is worthy of denigrating or to be little is to insult. So to insult, maybe it is possible. Modern critics, don't you think that modern critics is a very, very generalized term? When we are looking at a reading comprehension passage, we are looking at the author's perception. We are looking at one or two points that are being explained, but not necessarily generalized or overgeneralized like this. Moreover, it sounds very petty to say belittling modern critics. How can a reading passage belittle modern critics? Perhaps not possible. This is very, very generalized. So this very surely we can eliminate from among the answer options. 
like we have eliminated and answer option A also because here we say that a relationship between literature and history and its description is not really possible in a reading comprehension passage. So these two very comfortably because they are so vast in their, um, in their focus you can eliminate them. Take a look at the next one. To refute, okay, to disprove a misconception. Misconception, what is misconception? What is a concept? A concept is an idea. So a misconcept would be an incorrect idea or a mistaken notion. So a misconception is a wrong idea which is quite possible because you are talking about one particular idea, focuses on one particular um, uh, point that is there, refute. So maybe we are trying to disprove it. This looks like one of the possibilities that could be considered because it is more in line with what could happen in a 500 line or sorry in a 500 word passage. Now let's take a look at D. To delineate a new mode of literary analysis. What is literary analysis? It's a very vast subject just like literature and history are endless, literary analysis also could be so vast, it could be so huge, therefore delineating that is um, analyzing literary analysis is probably not possible, uh, it's not possible to be done in a 500 word essay that we are given. So therefore delineate a new mode of literary analysis perhaps not possible. Look at the next one. To suggest several remedies for a problem. Now there could be a problem mentioned. That is quite possible. When we say several remedies. Maybe there are one or two uh, corrections to the problem. There are one or two suggestions that make the pro that resolve the problem. Anything could be there. Or there could be one or two examples that help us explain the problem. Or um, a curative for a certain uh, uh, disease or a problem that is mentioned. Anything is possible. So this is also possible because it is quite narrow in its perception. So depending on the type of passage that is given, these two answers, C and E, that is to refute a misconception and to suggest several remedies for a problem, these two are quite possible as answer options because even though we do not have a passage, these two can be considered as answers because these are very fo focused in terms of the answers while you look at the other answer options they are too scattered or too very generalized. So let's take a look at another example to see how the primary purpose questions can be analyzed. Questions can be analyzed in terms of the answer options and the framing of the answer options whether the answer options that are given are very very general in focus or whether they are very narrow in perception or whether they can be related to the various ideas that may be presented in the passage. Now remember we are looking at these questions and answer options without an idea of what a passage will look like or without any uh, uh, example passage as such. But this we are doing only because we want to throw light on the fact that primary purpose questions uh, can be handled in a manner that is very, very logical and analytical. And the reading of the passage or the type of reading that is required for this type of question can be guided by our understanding of what the answer options are likely to look like. Because then what will happen is when we read a passage, it will no longer be passive reading because we would have a purpose, it would be called as active reading. And for active reading, a very clear idea as to what we are looking for in terms of the passage is absolutely necessary. And to get that what we are looking for in terms of the passage can be guided by our uh, logical analysis of the given answer options, what could be related and what could be eliminated. So let's take a look at another answer or another um, uh, set of examples to delineate the same thing, to explain the same primary purpose. Which of the following best expresses the purpose of the passage? The question is essentially the same. This can be... Um, a simple question like the primary purpose of the passage is to. It could be even a very simple phrase like that. So let's take a look at the answers here. 
to persuade students to refrain from political science. Now let's break this down into components. What are we doing here? We are trying to persuade students. To do what? To do something with political science. Now is political science something that is very very narrow in its perception? Or is it something that is a very vast subject? Obviously political science is a vast subject. So what are we trying to do? We are trying to take this very vastness of the subject and trying to say we are persuading students to refrain from. What is the meaning of refrain? To refrain from is to not do. That means we are persuading students to keep away from political science. Now do you think that is possible in um, a short essay of 500 words or 80, 90 lines? Maybe not because this is very, very generalized. So this we can safely remove from among our answer options. To reiterate the evolution of morals in European history. So what is the meaning of reiterate? To reiterate or reiterate is to restate, to repeat, to emphasize. What are we emphasizing? We are emphasizing the evolution of the very term evolution tells us that it is going to be very, very vast. Forget about the rest of it. But if you look at the rest of the answer option also, it says evolution of morals. Now, evolution of morals is a vast topic and that too in European history, it is very, very vast for this answer to be considered as part of a primary purpose of the passage question. So, therefore, this also we can safely eliminate from among the answers. But remember, we are doing this in a very, very logical fashion. We are not taking anything for granted. We are only looking at the answers in terms of whether they can be related to some information that can be presented in a limited um, uh, set of lines or whether it can be an answer that can be dealt with in tomes of uh, books. To attack the credibility of politicians. To attack seems to be right. Credibility also seems to be right. But credibility of politicians, then we are saying that politicians in general are somebody who should be attacked. Maybe we do not want to say that. Maybe we do not want to say something like that. And remember passages on the SAT will never demean any kind of culture, caste, profession, uh, race, Nothing of that sort can be done. So if you are looking at politicians and not any one particular politician, then obviously that cannot be considered. Because you can take an example of somebody and then probably say attacking the credibility of so and so a person, which is quite possible, though that will not be done on the reading comprehension passages. Uh, here, the entire class of politicians or group or profession called politics cannot be belittled like that. So therefore, this also cannot be related. Take a look at the next one. To refute a misconception, obviously to refute a misconception is nothing but to disprove a certain theory like we have seen earlier. Since misconception is only one particular idea, we can always refute that. To suggest a solution to a problem. Yeah, if there is a problem mentioned, if there is a problem mentioned, there could be a possible solution that is given. Now, if there is, say for example, a narrative type of passage that is given to us. What is a narrative type of passage? In a narrative passage, we have an introduction, wherein in the introduction, there is a conflict that is mentioned. There is a set of um, uh, problems that could be mentioned, followed by a uh, body of the conflict, in the sense how uh, the conflict develops, and then we have a conclusion or a resolution for the conflict. So here, when we are talking about a conflict, we are talking about a problem. So whenever there is a problem that is mentioned, we can safely class it as a narrative type of passage. In a narrative type of passage, generally, the initial st uh, stages of the paragraph will state the problem. The middle portion will develop that problem. And the last portion will tell us the uh, answer to that problem. So given the fact that you could have a narrative type of essay that is given to you, this is also quite a possibility. Whether there is one solution or number of solutions depends on 
how the passage is organized and what ideas the author of the passage is presenting. So as we can see, <clears throat> the answer options for the primary purpose are not very different. Only thing remains is that we are able to eliminate answer options based on whether they are too very wide in focus or whether they can be related to something that can be presented as content of the reading comprehension passage. Which of these answers <coughs> is relevant depends on the contents of the passage. But even before we look at the passage, if we can come down to one or two answers, which is quite possible if you analyze it in the way that is explained here, then it becomes easier for you uh, to make a choice between these two. Because as you can see, you can very easily make out if it's a wrong idea or if there is a problem. You can very easily make out if there is a mere denial or a solution being granted. So that way, a comparison of the answer options with relation to the passage that is given, if you can do that, then your primary purpose passage is taken care of. Now, in this way, we can handle the primary purpose. <clears throat>